So I work in uh, taste processing and kind of one of the deals, one of the things we deal with is with the emergence of AI, how do we use, you know, stuff like, I'm going to use machine learning, deep learning, AI all synonymously, but how do we use this technology to extract creative, um, meaningful information from data like signals or pictures? And um, to begin with, I'm just going to... Uh, try to go over basically what our general understanding of what AI is and then talk about you know um, like the idea of when will machines sort of um, develop consciousness or when will they become sophisticated enough that they can think creatively which is I believe the point at which they'll start becoming you know interesting and useful to us and not just doing menial tasks All right so to begin with um, AI is, like I said, very broadly, just any way we can extract meaningful information from any bunch of data, and the meaningful part depends on what scale you're looking at. And this generally involves, like, making a model. And I know that's, like, a very textbook definition, but I'll get back to that. And to start off, you know, a model can be anything as simple as fitting a curve to some data points. Right? And to give a pertinent example, um, some things you might, guys might be familiar with is how we can use AI to detect objects in pictures. You know, another thing that's really coming up is how self-driving cars operate. And both of these things use models. Um, in the top picture, the model basically tells you, you know, what do the objects look like? So that the, whatever machine learning agent is can look at a picture and describe what's in there. And the other, in the self-driving cars, the model basically um, not only recognizes what an object looks like, but also tries to figure out what to do when those objects are close. And so this particular kind of AI, and I'll make a distinction in the next slide, uses previous examples to learn from. And so it's drawing connections between you know, what an object looks like in a picture and what it is, and what an object looks like and what to do. But it generally um, needs a lot of data to work with, um, whereas another type of AI will not. Um, and that's something we'll be more interested in, I'll get into that. And um, as Sasha and Ian showed, you know, AR and VR, also you will use AI like Google Glass um, and related objects, use AI to augment our reality and you know, kind of give us external information that we did not have to begin with. So the other type of AI, which does um, not use um, any training examples, can kind of work by itself to, in this case, figure out what's in the foreground, the plane, and you know, separate it from the background, which is the which is the clouds. And this kind of like self-generating. Um, well, that's not a good way to phrase it, but um, self-producing AI is hopefully what we'll head towards in the future, because it does, even though it relies on a model, it does not need to be extensively trained, which is a draining process um, for people who work with AI. And at this point, I'll make a distinction between these two types. The first example, which we saw in where the image classification was happening, was the AI type called supervised learning, um, which trains on a lot of prior data. and. Essentially, we give it a bunch of examples of what we want it to do, and it figures out um, on new examples how it works. And to, trade, um, to take it back to the line example I showed, it'll be basically like showing it how we fit a bunch of lines to data points, and then it figures out how to do that in new examples. And this is the AI that is dominant these days, and I'll show you more examples of that. But the unsupervised kind, which doesn't need examples, it relies on a model, but it doesn't need any prior data. So essentially, we give it some idea of, you know, we give it a heuristic. Like, this is how you will fit a line. And then when we expose the data points, it more or less figures out by itself how to fit that line. And that's where we hope to go. And supervised learning is what we're really good at right now. And unsupervised, eh, we're still getting there. It's a hard journey. But the question in my mind is, you know, this kind of supervised learning, where you can show um, a machine a picture, 
and it can tell you with very high accuracy what's in the picture. If we're already at this point, then you know how far are we from machines that can think for themselves. And in that creativity, help us think too. And along with that particular example, we have other AI which can defeat grandmasters in very complicated games at a much higher efficiency than a human will be able to. Or, you know, be devastatingly good at something like Jeopardy. You know, if we're already able to do this, then how, how much are we from the sci-fi kind of future where AIs will be able to um, discuss ideas with us? And at least for me, you know, we're, we're still pretty far um, because what these kind of AIs are doing um, is they're learning through supervised learning. You know, that, um, oh, that didn't show up pretty well. But basically, when you're playing Go, what the AI did was it learned a bunch of examples of, you know, if you make this move, or if my opponent makes this move, what move will I make? And over 10,000 iterations of that, it became better than any human could. And same with Jeopardy, it was able to recognize what the person was saying to it and look quickly for a response. And all of these, in addition to not only being supervised, also means that they're simply action-reaction tasks. You know, my opponent made a move, I'll make a move. Um, the person said something to me, I'll think of an answer. And in this, you know, there's a lack of abstraction and conceptualization which we will need in AIs which are creative and can come up with ideas rather than simply an action. And to move on, what AI will need to evolve into is have a theory of mind. And I apologize to any psychologists in the audience for using this so loosely. But the idea is basically that they'll have to come up with abstract conceptualizations rather than, you know, um, just interacting with the environment and become unsupervised in the sense um, that, you know, if I leave you in a chair here, you know, you're not, you don't need external input to think. You can think by yourself. You won't need examples to generally be able to do things. Um, and I, 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 I want to like kind of parse out these differences with a few things we say are think. Like, you know, if, you're, if you get thirsty, you, you think you want some juice. But there's a difference between you thinking, I want juice, and I know I want juice. You know, that internalization or that layer of abstraction above the action itself is um, you know, the kind of the, the consciousness of what we're thinking. And then there's another step above that is, you know, you question yourself. You know, it's like, okay, I, I have a particular idea, but why? And at this point, you know, we currently have no idea how to do that. And I just thought, like, I'm pretty sure all of us have thought, you know, what our pets have named us. And that kind of creativity, you know, that kind of um, un, uh, you know, um, no one, no one um, asks you, or, you know, there's no external um, initiation of why you would think what your cat named you. And at this point, you know, um, AI is always directed to perform a task, but at some point it will need to become self-initiating. And so we don't know how to do that yet. You know, there's nothing in mathematical modeling or even our understanding of how the brain works that describes where that layer of abstraction, where that conceptualization of ideas comes from. And you know, we're, we're making a lot of headway in you know, how machine well how well machines are doing action tasks um, and hopefully that'll lead to a breakthrough in how you move from just the action to the idea of performing the action and so hopefully that'll be a fun ride thank you cool. thank you